Hey everyone, so I'm coming back at you with Chasm Part 2. Um, again, this video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, so big shout out to them and thank you for sponsoring the video. Uh, link down in the description below for Chasm. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Okay, so now that we have Chasm all loaded up and everything and we're signed in, um, I'm going to kind of walk through the whole purposes and everything of Chasm. So if we click up here and we click on Workspaces, um, you can see here that some of them are brightly shown and some of them are gray. So these are the different workspaces that you can load up. They're basically like small Docker containers in a sense. So say you want to um, open up basically a Chrome browser you can click on Chrome right here and you can you can just do either the current tab or a new tab or a new window um, we can just go ahead and do the current tab and click on launch session so now you can see here now it's basically loading up a new Chrome tab and what it's saying right here is says C text and images copied to clipboard so what this is wanting to ask you is it's allowing for like if you could copy and paste from this Chrome browser to your actual computer and vice versa. So we're just going to click allow and then over here in the very far left hand side you can see a little arrow. You can click on the arrow and this pulls out this menu. So this is what you can choose to enable or disable sound, have your microphone enabled or disabled, um, a lot of different things in here. Um, the workspaces, you can log out of the session and delete the session. So as you can see here, we're basically in like a Dockerized Chrome tab. So you can see up here at the top, this is my Chrome that I'm using. So I can open up a new tab and this is my actual computer's Google. But if I go over here to Chasm Workspaces and down below, there's another Chrome tab. So this is the isolated Chrome. So I can click here and open up tabs right here as well. So it's basically like an isolated version of the internet. Let's get into the purposes of why you would want to do this. So for example, the reason why you want to do this, let's say um, you want to download a file. So we're going to do like a slacks download. Um, let's just say like somebody sends you an email with like a suspicious link or they send you something that you're not really too sure about or you're browsing the internet and you find a link that you really don't know if it's going to be safe or not. So right here with slacks, this is basically, you know, just an OS. Um, I can click over here on download. And I can go through and I can browse this site. I can, you know, download the image, so on and so forth, whatever I want to do, um, all isolated. And then if anything were to happen or say this was malicious, I can just simply click over here on the arrow and just click on delete session and click delete. And now you can see it's deleting the session that I was just in. So now it takes me right back to Chasm and everything I just did never happened. Nice. So that's one example of why you would want to use Chasm. The applications you can see here, um, we have an application Discord. Uh, I'm going to show you the purpose of why you would want to update these applications. So if we click on Discord right here and we just go ahead and launch the session, Okay, now you can see here, now that it's pulled up, it's saying that um, it must be your lucky day, there's a new update. So it's wanting you to download the update, but if you click on any of these three right here and you click on download, unfortunately it doesn't do anything. It will just prompt you right back to the download. And it does that for all three. So that's pretty much like what happens. So like no matter what you do, there's no getting out of this. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to update the Discord application so that way you can actually access Discord. So to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click over here onto the arrow. And you can click either on workspaces or log out or delete session. But 
Um, so just to show you also, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on workspaces. So now you can see here that I'm back to my Chasm workspaces and you can see Discord's open over here. Um, Discord, and it also shows you that it's been up for about a minute and it expires within 58 minutes. So this is something you can change and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. Also, another side note also to keep in mind, um, right here um, you can view your different running applications and you can resume them or delete them as well. So if we wanted to, we could just click on resume and we're right back into Discord where we were. So what we're going to want to do now is let's just go ahead and delete this. And we're going to go ahead and update Discord. So to update Discord, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the internet and we're going to type in chasm web docker. And once you type in chasm web docker right here on the first um, link, you're going to want to click on this one. Okay. And then what you're going to want to do, what I usually do is when I come on here, um, I'll usually just click up here under the search bar and I usually just do chasm again. Like I'll just do chasm web, uh, press enter. So see now you can see once you've searched up chasm web, it's pulling up all the different images from chasm. So you can see here like the Tor browser, Chrome, Firefox. So this is for Discord. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to tags. And you can see here that the latest image for Discord is 1.12.0 rolling. So if we go back over here to Chasm, let's click on that actual name Chasm. Uh, we can go down here to, we can go to workspaces right here. Once you click on workspaces, um, what we can do is we can click on um, rows per page. We can just expand this to 100 just to see all of them. Um, if you go down here to Discord right here, you can see that it's the current image is Chasm Web slash Discord, and the current image is 1.12.0. So if you go back here, you can see it's 1.12.0, but it doesn't have the dash rolling. So what we could do is we can go into Discord right here, click the three dots, and click on Edit. And then under the image right here, under Chasm Web Discord, just go ahead and put in the dash rolling. And then scroll down to the bottom and click Submit. Now what that's going to do is that's going to input, you can see right here Discord, and you can see the rolling has been added. So what that's going to do is it's going to continuously update that image to where it's not just stuck at the 1.12. So, so Another thing too, now that we just did this, you can see here like if I launch the session, um, I do get prompted right here to create Chasm, no resources are available. That's because it's currently updating Discord. So just give it a little while and it will eventually update itself and you'll be able to access it. We could do is we can go back over to chasm you can click on workspaces and then you can see right here that this is like the long list of all the different applications you can access um, one of them I like to use as an example right here is Kali Linux so if you want to load up Kali Linux you can see here there's a little X so the of course I mean it's pretty standard like whether it's enabled or disabled X means it's disabled check means it's enabled so if we go back over to Kali right here, we can click on the three dots and click on edit. And then right here underneath the thumbnail URL, there's a little enabled box. Just go ahead and check that, scroll down, and then go ahead and click on submit. And then if we click back up here to workspaces, now you can see we have Kali Linux. But there's a little red triangle right here. So basically what it's doing right now is it's downloading like Kali for the Docker. So it's getting everything prepared and ready so that way you can run it. So just same thing with Discord. Just give it a little while and eventually it will finish and you will be able to access Kali. Okay, so now I've given it a little while. It's been about five minutes or so. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click back over here onto Discord and just go ahead and hit launch session.
Now you can see now it's showing checking for update. It's going to go ahead and go through and download the updates. So now you can see that it's not showing you that prompt anymore, the prompt of wanting you to update. Now it's actually doing it. So just by adding that dash rolling, that's how to fix this. So now once this is done completely installing the updates, now you'll have an isolated version of Discord running in your browser. And there you go. So now you can see I'm prompted right here with the login screen. So this is simply how you can just log into Discord and use it like normally, but you're isolated in your browser. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click over here. We're just going to go back to the workspaces and you can see here that it still expires in 58 minutes like I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to show you exactly how to change that. So what we want to do now is we're just going to click on delete and go ahead and delete that session. We're going to click on admin up here at the top. You're going to click on workspaces, go back down to discord and you're going to do this basically per application. So depending on how long you want to utilize each application for. So just click on the three dots on discord, click on edit. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see down here right here where it says session time limit in seconds. So you're just going to input this in seconds. So unfortunately it is in seconds. I mean, um, it's not really something, you know, we can change or anything. So um, what we're going to do, let's say we want to have the session be able to run for a five hour time limit. If that's the case, then let's just go ahead and enter 18,000, which is in seconds. So that would represent five hours. We're just going to click on submit. And then we're going to go back up to workspaces, click on Discord and launch Discord. Now that Discord is launching, you can actually see it right here at the bottom. You can see the time limit that has started. So now you can see I have five hours until this session expires pretty much. And then also another thing too is you can click over here onto the side and you can click on workspaces. And you can see right here under Discord now, you can see now it expires in four hours and 58 minutes. So I'm not 100% sure why this is happening. Um, for some reason, when I'm trying to load up Kali Linux, um, it doesn't quite work. So even if I do like a new window and launch a session, you can see here that like when I launch it, um, it launches, but it just kind of sits onto a black screen and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so I've tried adding the rolling image. Um, I've tried doing a bunch of different things, but for some odd reason, it's not showing Kali. It's just sitting on a black screen, not doing nothing. I've tried clicking, I've tried pressing enter, I've tried doing different things, but nothing seems to work. So if you kind of know what's going on, just kind of post it down below in the comment section because I'm not 100% sure as to why this isn't working, but just let me know in the comments if you know maybe a fix to this. But for now, um, it's not the only operating system on uh, Chasm, so we'll just go ahead and leave that and delete this instance. Um, another operating system is CentOS 7. Um, I do know for sure that this one works. I've already tested it. So we can just do it in a new window right here and just hit launch session. And you can see that this is basically like a Docker version of a whole operating system right here. So there you go. So now you can see if I full screen this now, I basically have a whole operating system. So I can, you know, click on Google Chrome. I can, you know, do multiple things in here. I can click up here on applications. Um, let's try to launch Chrome. So this is Google Chrome right here. You can see it open. It did take quite a bit of time, but I mean, nothing's perfect and at least it works. So, but it is a whole entire operating system. I can click on downloads and I have like a file system and everything. So you can see here that it works perfectly fine. Um, we can click down here, go back to workspaces. Um, let's see here. We can actually close out of this window. There you go. And so we can just go ahead and just delete that instance. So that's basically just kind of a, a little tiny run through of Chasm and some of the quick things that Chasm does. Um, again, I just want to thank Chasm for supporting this 
video and sponsoring us. Um, I just want to, you know, give a big shout out to them. And if there's anything really you want to see involving Chasm, um, just put in the comment section down below and I'll look into posting a video about it. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. We